theoretically you could do so you, so you can get very nitpicky on how these things are and that's i think when we talk about this stuff is is what's practical what is what are the practical things that went wrong here that we would all agree to go you know what yeah this is very preventable and what are the things that you go okay right we don't want this to happen this is still terrible but it was more akin to going around a car on the highway where you don't foresee any real danger um but it ultimately leads to danger uh, when does caution go from being safe to being paranoid? This week, Josh and Ryan talked a little bit about the deadly 2018 explosion of an oil rig near Quinton, Oklahoma, and discussed the issues surrounding that a little bit. They talk about government regulation here and whether or not we need a lot of industry regulation to ensure and protect safety in the oil field. Well, a... Uh... E&E News, deadliest drilling accident in a decade was preventable. Um, so every, every every so often we have, you know, catastrophes that hit the industry, you know, back in 2010 with BP. Uh, the 2018 explosion um, in Quinton, Oklahoma, it killed five people. We, we talked a bit about that on the show when, when it happened. Uh, what they're saying is that the blowout was completely preventable and the safety board plans to monitor the drilling industry uh, CSB's interim executive director said at a press conference. Uh, so what, what they're saying is that it was preventable and they're going to use this incident in order to bring more, um, more government oversight into the industry. Uh, this is one of the things we're always trying to avoid. We want as little of this as possible. And uh, the question really is, was it really preventable or was it just a, was it just a freak accident that wasn't? So that, uh, that was one of the questions we had back then, and there's more information that's come out about that incident, uh, you know, in the past week. Yeah, and so let's just be clear, you know, we're not talking about the, the families and the people that died. That's a tragedy, and it's sad, and, and we're talking more just on the um, actual merits as we understand them today. So we're not trying to minimize whether, no matter where we come down this issue, it is tragic that people lost their lives. Um and as you mentioned, Josh, it's not that we want deregulation so that people can die. It's that we want deregulation because we want the industry to regulate themselves. And we're, the fear is that when regulation comes in, um, the cost to do business goes up. It makes it not available for as many people. So therefore, as we always plead with our oil and gas companies, do the right thing so that you don't get in this predicament. You know, I, I kind of read through this, and I, I'll be honest with you, Josh, I kinda, I, I'm kind of i not an expert on this topic, and so I am not. I don't really have the expertise to, to lay claim to what happened. There are some things that seem like maybe they were kind of, uh, some things that seem like maybe they were uh, potentially problems that, that should have been addressed sooner, and there's some things that, that, that aren't. Um, and so I, I think the... the um, I think the thing that, that I always wonder is when you say, when you're dealing with humans... Almost everything on some level is preventable just mm. by not by not doing something or doing something different. So so when we're saying it's preventable, yeah, okay, I, I can see. But there's some things in here. They talk about the mud and the way the mud and, and keep the gas out. And it's, you kind of read both sides of that. Like, eh. But then there's other parts where the alarms were turned off. It's like, okay, that didn't look very good. So I kind of walked away with it going as a, as a lay observer, not a professional on drill rig accidents. So as a lay observer, just reading this, it kind of seemed like there was some things that could have been done better and that should have done better. I'm um, assuming that this this article is right, and there's some things that look like they're probably just lumped in there, but they're not as important. Um, you know, we all have to make decisions, right? So when you when you drive on the road, um, the speed limit's 75 in Texas. You have to decide whether or not you're going to slow down. If you're say you're in the right lane going 75, you have to decide when that car you reach in front of you if you're going to slow down and go match its speed at a safe distance, or you're going to pass around it. That's a decision that you have to make. We go around those people all the time. Most people do. They just go around those people, right? But that is a decision that you make. And when you go around that person, it is theoretically possible that you could lose control. You could go over too far. You could overcorrect. There's all kinds of things that could happen. So, um, but those are decisions that you make. You, you, you weighed the risk and you said, okay, I'm, I'm going to go around this person. Um, but you don't have to do that. And so theoretically, you could do, so you, so you can get very nitpicky on how these things are. And that's, I think, when we talk about this stuff, is, is what's practical? What is, what are the practical things that went wrong here that we would all agree to go, you know what, yeah, this is very preventable. And what are the things that you go, okay, right, we don't want this to happen, this is still terrible. But 
it was more akin to going around a car on the highway where you don't foresee any real danger, um, but it ultimately leads to danger. Uh, me and you were talking about something the other day. We know that was just, um, you know, picked up the phone, sent a quick text message, and next thing you know, they were going to, you know, uh, uh, a deadly car crash. Um, obviously, that's a little bit more on the scale of you can see the foreseeable potential for danger there is picking up the cell phone um, compared to, you know, just going around someone. So there's a wide range of things we're talking about. And I think that's what we have to make sure as folks who want the industry to be responsible, we have to be responsible in understanding exactly what these ranges are. And I, I'm just, I'm not um, an expert enough. And we've got someone who's a safety expert would like to come on and talk about it. Be happy to have them. That was kind of my takeaway, Josh. Some of the stuff, it's like, okay, that looks pretty damning. And some of the stuff looks pretty minor. Yeah, I mean, the the looking at the mud weight stuff, I mean, that didn't seem very damning at all. I mean, they talked about they were using a lighter mud weight, and they should have used a heavier mud weight. And the other guy's coming back saying that everything they, they used was up to code. So, um, I mean, there could possibly be stuff, like you said, you're not an expert, I'm not an expert, so I don't know what, you know, the mud weight was supposed to be. But, um, yeah, what, one of the things you can always say is hindsight's always twenty twenty. I mean, you, you know that something was done wrong because there was an explosion and five people were killed. Absolutely. Whether or not the company should have been able to foresee that or the five people or the there was something at fault. Um is it, I think you know, reasonable. I, I like to think of it as reasonable. Is it, was it, we're, we're, so, and again, it could be a culmination of, you know, 15 decisions where you realize that they all made 15 reasonable decisions that ultimately led to this, this terrible accident. Um, well, if that's the case, then you go, well, is this, you know, do we need to tweak this to, or, or do we go, well, good night, 15 decisions it took to get to this point. Um, the odds of that happening are pretty slim. Um, whereas there's, you know, you know, how big a decisions are these? Are these small nuances? Are these big thought through decisions? There's all this stuff we have to weigh in. So I, I agree with you. And I just think, again, um, what I want to emphasize, I think you do as well, is just read this stuff, think through it, try to process it, talk to folks in the industry, and try to be fair about it. Because ultimately, um, I would say it's, I don't know, if you're dealing with human bulk, human bulk equipment, I mean, if you walk out into the woods, Josh, and a tree falls over and kills you because the wind blew it down. That was completely preventable. You didn't have to walk out to the woods. And so, yep. so and, and now we're not making light that this is akin to that. But is it, so is it, is it that, or is it more akin to you're out there, instead of playing paintball, you're playing with live ammunition. You know, there's, there, there's a, there's two sides of this. There's, you know, the scale and where does it fall in there? And that's what always seems to be hard to, um, hard to figure out. And again, our hearts goes out to the families that, uh, that lost their, their loved ones. It's mm. a terrible situation. Thoughts on this? Questions? Let us know in the comments. For the Texas Oil and Gas Podcast, this is your producer, Nate Hansen.